I've been yammering on quite a bit here lately about the rings of power and the acolyte and how the writers of both shows insist on portraying every one of their female characters as girl bosses. I've also put forth my arguments as to why the audience ain't buying what Hollywood's selling. Y'all do realize it's possible to portray a woman as being strong, powerful, independent, stoic, and can kick butt and take names and still have her be likable, sympathetic, appealing, sexy even. How do I know? It's been done before. A lot. Case in point, the movie Aram, a fun, lighthearted Korean reinterpretation of the superhero movie that came out in 2004. I'd like to introduce you all to So Yi Yoon, who by all objective standards is a very beautiful woman. So Yi portrays Wee Jin, a young woman who can beat the stuffing out of almost any man at will. Wee Jin beats up the main male protagonist multiple times, the first time by accident. Wee Jin is constantly yelling at, chastising, and putting in his place the main male protagonist, a couple of times out in public. The movie downplays So Yi's innate beauty, simple hairstyle, minimal makeup, and her figure is hidden underneath baggy exercise clothes. Hey, wait a minute, Randy. This Wee Jin sounds kind of girl bossy. Yeah, but as the famous architect Mies van der Rohe is credited with saying, devil's in the details. The biggest problem a girl boss faces is believability. Or another way to put it, physics. A woman is smaller with less muscle mass than a man. If you don't take that into account in your storytelling, you're done before you even start. No one will buy what you're selling, no matter how much ideological hand-waving you try to do. There are two easy, very simple solutions to this problem. The first one, just cast an actress who looks like she could hang in a fight. Looks like she could throw a punch, and more importantly, the audience could believe she can take a punch. The second solution, magic. Give the woman superpowers, and it becomes easy to believe she could beat up most men. Combine the two, looks like she could hang in a fight and has superpowers. Now we're off to the races. According to the internet, and we know the internet's always right, but according to the internet, So Yi is 5758. On the high end of average for a woman, so decent size. Like a lot of Korean women, So Yi is slender, willowy even. But it's believable that she could portray a character who has spent most of her life studying martial arts. Back to Wee Jin. When we first meet her, we learn she can jump from rooftop to rooftop. She can run up and down the side of buildings. She can snap knives in half with her bare hands. She can throw inner force or chi hard enough to knock out a grown man. And she can beat the crap out of street punks without working up a sweat. Weijin is extremely overpowered. It would be very easy for the audience to take an instant dislike to her. So why is Weijin running all over buildings, snapping knives, throwing chi around? She's fighting crime. She's chasing down some thug who stole a purse from a little old lady. What happens when Weijin finally corners the purse snatcher? She screws up, knocks out the wrong guy. A hapless rookie cop named Song Guan who is also chasing the purse snatcher. What's her immediate reaction? The first thing she says, Oh no, I did it again! In her body language, facial expression, she feels bad. She takes her embarrassment, guilty feelings, out on the street punk, stomps a mud hole in him. In one quick, short scene, Wee Jin goes from overpowered superhero to sympathetic, relatable young woman. She makes a mistake. She feels bad about the mistake. She tries to pass the buck, blames somebody else for the mistake. But she ultimately takes responsibility for the mistake. She doesn't run off, leaving Song Kwan laying in the street. Sorry about your bad luck, buddy. Wrong place, wrong time. Not my fault. No, she takes him to somebody she thinks can help her. Her daddy. Wee Jin was raised by her superhero father and his superhero friends. She spent most of her life hanging around dojos, studying martial arts, learning to be a superhero herself. 
Weijin has had very little female influence in her life. She's become the classic tomboy, not overly concerned with her appearance. When she's not wearing a gi, she just throws on hoodies and sweats. The martial art that Weijin practices emphasizes self-control, so she tends to be very calm and reserved. On top of that, Weijin just hasn't been around normal people that much. She doesn't know how to act. More often than not, she says or does the wrong thing, giving a bad impression. Many people think she's cold, rude, and disrespectful. When Song Huan wakes up, the poor guy Weijin knocked out, he finds himself surrounded by a group of elders who tell him they're retired superheroes. The elders tell Song Quan that he has the most amount of qi, inner force, that they've ever seen in one person. He could be the next great superhero, and they really want to train him. Song Quan thinks he's surrounded by a bunch of nutcases who've just escaped from the loony bin. All he wants to do is get the heck out of Dodge. There's a catch. There's always a catch. Song Quan has become infatuated with Wee Jin. And we'll learn throughout the movie, Wee Jin is rather infatuated with Song Quan as well. Sung Kwan is idealistic, if a bit naive. He became a police officer because he actually wants to help people. A couple days after his encounter with Wee Jin, her father, and his friends, Sung Kwan discovers his partner is corrupt, working with gangsters. Sung Kwan tries to put a stop to the corruption, and the gangsters beat him up. The other officers in his department aren't happy with Sung Kwan. He's rocking the boat disturbing the status quo. They ostracize him. Song Quan goes back to Weijin and her little group, begs them to train him. Come to find out, Song Quan doesn't know how to fight. He doesn't even know how to stand up for himself. They agree to train him, and chaos ensues. Weijin becomes Song Quan's training partner, and she beats the crap out of him, especially at the beginning. Weijin is not trying to prove that she's the baddest mamma jamma in town. On the contrary, she genuinely likes and cares for Sung Kwan. She's trying to help him, help him improve, become better, become stronger. It's just the only way she knows how to help is with tough love. I mean really tough love. As Sung Kwan slowly becomes more skillful, more powerful, you can tell by her little smiles, glances behind his back, that Wee Jin is just as proud of his accomplishments as if they were her own. Wee Jin decides she wants to buy Song Quan dinner. While the two are having dinner, the gangsters that beat up Song Quan show up. One of them comes over because he wants to publicly humiliate Song Quan again. Wee Jin starts shouting at Song Quan, telling him, sit down. Eat your food. Ignore the gangster. Wee Jin isn't trying to put Song Quan in his place, tell him what to do, publicly chastise and humiliate him because she's the woman and she knows what's right. On the contrary, she's still trying to help him in her awkward, inept way. She has recognized that Song Quan has a problem. She recognizes that all those years of not standing up for himself, being bullied, being beat up by the gangsters, he has built up a lot of anger and that he will never reach his full potential, become the superhero his masters think he can become unless he learns to let go of that anger. Weijin might be right that Sun Quan needs to learn to control his anger, but her publicly shouting and yelling at him just adds fuel to the fire, causes the gangster to escalate his intimidation and bullying. The movie also acknowledges that Sun Quan is right as well. First off, as a man, there is a line you cannot allow to be crossed, not if you want to keep your self-respect. Secondly, if Sun Quan is going to learn to get past his anger, let it go, at some point he's going to have to confront the trauma that caused that anger, the gangsters. What happens next? Well, you guessed it, brawl breaks out. On a little side note, if you all ever find yourselves in Korea, don't get into a public brawl. They really frown on that. It won't work out well for you. The fight breaks out, and it's very apparent the gangsters aren't on Song Kwan's level. They can't even hurt him. Song Kwan wins the fight easily. 
Weijin is right, though. Song Quan isn't in control of his anger. He continues to attack one of the gangsters, even when the gangster becomes defenseless. Weijin has to pull Song Quan off of him. Weijin is enraged. She shouts at Song Quan all the way back to the dojo, pointing out every one of his mistakes. But again, the movie presents that both are right. Both have legitimate points. And Weijin isn't angry shouting at Song Quan because, as the woman, she's right and she knows better and he should have listened to her. She's angry because she expected better of her friend. Her anger comes from a place of care and concern. She wants to help her friend improve, become stronger, a better person. Unbeknownst to the two quarreling lovebirds, there's an ancient evil in this world, and he showed up because he's looking for Weijin's daddy because he has something the ancient evil wants real bad. The ancient evil defeats Weijin, not because she's a woman, because he's an ancient evil that has more internal power, chi, than she does. In fact, he could easily defeat her daddy. Daddy gives Weijin and Sung Kwan whatever the thing the big baddie's looking for, tells them, run away. Of course, they come back, and Daddy's been kidnapped. Weijin starts to panic. She's losing control of her emotions. Sung Kwan is the voice of reason. Calm down. We can think this through. We'll figure it out. Fast forward to the final showdown. And the two lovebirds realize the only chance they have of defeating this much more powerful being is if they work together. What? A man and woman working together? Using their strengths to compensate for the other's weaknesses? Whoever came up with such a bizarre idea? As the fight continues, Weijin notices Sung Kwan is getting stronger and stronger. Weijin recognizes they may not have enough time to wait for Sun Quan to become strong enough to defeat the baddie. So she decides to sacrifice herself, trade wound for wound with the baddie. Weijin's self-sacrifice works. Sun Quan is able to finally defeat the baddie. The movie ends with Weijin accidentally knocking out the wrong guy again. The two lovebirds get into another squabble, Weijin desperately trying to deflect responsibility. It's not my fault. It was an accident. Hey, you're not so good at this either. As I said earlier, you can make a strong, powerful, kick-ass woman and not have her become a girl boss. The devil's in the details. Despite her power, Weijin is the exact opposite of a girl boss. Weijin screws up, makes mistakes. At times, she relies on others for help. She's kind, caring, and compassionate. She's loyal, and she's willing to sacrifice herself for those she loves. She's so endearing that her flaws just become another part of her quirky personality. Erran isn't the greatest movie ever made, but if you're interested in some light-hearted popcorn fare that will make you laugh, it always makes me laugh, and you're willing to put up with subtitles, it's well worth your time. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about, and until next time, y'all be safe. If y'all are still here, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. And maybe think about becoming a member of the channel. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.